What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real, where we talk about basketball, and specifically in today's video, we're talking about trades. It's been a week since the season has wrapped up, and I am ready to get to the offseason. Trades, signings, drafting, all of that. I'm ready for it. And, of course, we do a lot of these reacting to articles. Today's article is blockbuster NBA trades that actually make sense. And I'm super excited about it because, historically, when we react to these articles, this is not something that uh, is, is true. That actually makes sense. So I'm curious about it. A shout out to Grant Hughes. I must say this, if I disagree with every single trade that goes on in here, this is not an attack on him or Bleach Report or whatever. Because as we know, creating trades is hard. Like in real life, even in real life, like we see a trade happen and we immediately be like, whoa, this team got finesse. This team came out on top. And even long term, we kind of see that. So putting together a trade that makes sense for both teams on paper is hard. I admire anybody that takes the time to try to do that. But once you put it out, you're opening up the discussion. That's what we're doing in today's video. I see Russell Westbrook as a cover athlete for this, and it makes sense with everything that's going on with the Houston Rockets right now. It would make sense that he's going to be in a ton and a ton of rumors this offseason. I don't know if he actually gets traded, but you're going to see his name associated with every single team because, A, he's still a very good NBA player, and, B, the Houston Rockets don't have a general manager. Well, I guess they promoted somebody, but you get what I'm saying. They just lost their general manager. They still don't have a coach. Uh, they're capped out, no future assets. So a guy like Russell Westbrook, Makes sense for him to be in trade rumors. So I'm interested what type of trades they put together for Brody and all of that. Again, shout out to Grant Hughes. If you're new around here, uh, subscribe and leave a like on the video. This is the internet's biggest general manager. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. Let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. There are only five trades. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. I mean, if it's going to be blockbuster trades that make sense, we can't expect 30 trades because 30 trades won't make sense. You feel me? So... I'm rocking the Denver Nuggets shirt. I, di I didn't know that the Denver Nuggets are going to be associated in this article. Let's see what they get. They acquire Bradley Beal. Ooh. And they go out and give up Michael Porter Jr., Gary Harris, the 22nd overall pick in this year's draft, and the top 10 protector for 2022. Okay, let's attack this from both sides. So, Washington Wizards have expressed many, many times that they have no interest in trading Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal literally came out like a couple days ago and was like he wants to spend his entire career in Washington. Now, I'm not saying just because he says that means it's true. We've seen players say things like that before. Kyrie Irving said that he wanted to stay, and then like that, he was he was bolting. So, yes, this is something that players say all together. But I honestly do believe Bradley Beal when he says that. He signed a couple-year extension, which I think is interesting. And then... They, it doesn't make sense for them to trade Bradley Beal at this moment. I think they want to see what John Wall looks like. If you do not remember, I know it's been two seasons, but John Wall was a very, very good basketball player two years ago. It's been like, it's been two years, and I bet they want to see what this new John Wall looks like associated with this new Bradley Beal because the last time they played together, yes, they were a good duo, but Bradley Beal is on a whole new level now. A whole new level now. And John Wall is out in interview saying that he's 110, 120 cent healthy. I, I think that they would wait and see what that looks like. Their backcourt looks like at least for a couple months or so before they start trading away their pieces. And again, they've already said that they don't want to trade Bradley Beal. And it makes sense. I think he's 26 years old and he still has a lot of time left. And he's only getting better. But for the Denver Nuggets, I would like this trade. Now, I understand. Some Denver Nuggets uh, players, or not players, but fans be like, we don't want to give up Michael Porter Jr., which makes sense. Uh, Jordan. What did Michael Jordan say? The ceiling is the roof. The stupid old saying. The ceiling is the roof for Michael Porter Jr. Uh, he has amazing potential as a 6'10 guy that could come up and just shoot a shot in your face. Very Kevin Durant-like in that aspect. But the thing that still scares me about Michael Porter Jr. is that back, man. The man had two back surgeries before the age of 19. That is scary stuff for me personally. I still do believe that Michael Porter Jr. will have a very good NBA career, but for a team like the Denver Nuggets that were in the conference finals, maybe a trade like this where you're trying to get another star player is okay if you're giving up that future guy in Michael Porter Jr. Because Bradley Beal on the Denver Nuggets is a dangerous, dangerous team. You're giving up Gary Harris, who you've seen that like your team could be fine without Gary Harris, and he's got a big old contract. And those future assets, a 22nd overall pick, and um, a top 10 protected first. Not that bad if you're getting back Bradley Beal. But again, what I'm saying is that the Denver Nuggets probably don't trade Bradley Beal right now, not for this package. But I understand the idea. Does it actually make sense? K kinda. Trade number two, Happy Holidays. Indiana Pacers acquired Drew Holiday from the Pelicans for Miles Turner and either Doug McDermott or Jeremy Lamb in a 2021 second round pick. I like that he said, or Jeremy Lamb's coming off that Achilles? Was it Achilles? He's coming off a season in the injury. 
So we don't know what he'll look like. We know for sure Doug McDermott is going to shoot the, the skin off of the ball. Now, this is very interesting. Um, you get all the Holiday Brothers together in Indiana. I do like the idea of having Miles Turner for Zion Williamson. Um, when they signed Derek Favors, I was kind of confused. Not that Derek Favors is bad or anything, but I do believe that either the future for Zion Williamson looks like he's playing small ball center for a lineup, or you need a center alongside him that will stretch the floor. And of course, Miles Turner is that. I, does this does this mention Victor Oladipo at all? Because that that really okay. Keep in mind that Victor Oladipo heads into 2020 2021 on an expiring deal. So as of right now, they're saying that these guys will be together because Victor Oladipo is still there for the end of the season. Okay. Uh, Drew Holiday is still a very good NBA player. Every time I've heard NBA, another NBA player talk about Drew Holiday, they mention how, like he is the best defender in the league. Kevin Durant said that. JJ Redick has said that. Um, just so many players have come out and say like Drew Holiday is the guy that you don't want to go against every single night. And for the Indiana Pacers, they could use something like that, even though they do have tenacious defenders on the perimeter already. I don't know. Every time the Indiana Pacers name come up in a trade, I openly express to y'all that I don't know what makes sense for the Pacers at this moment. We, they still don't have a coach. And I don't know what direction really makes sense with Victor Lodipo, with Miles Turner. Do you open a game up for Sabonis, allow him to run full-time center? Because I think that's what this trade is really doing, allowing Sabonis to run full-time center. So anytime the Indiana Pacers are in a trade, I just tell you, I don't no because i really don't pacers fans i'll be looking for y'all in the comment section and i don't be seeing y'all comment what what would you think about a trade like this because as of right now i'm going to talk this up as an i incomplete because personally i do not know what the future of the indiana pacers should look like i don't know because a trade like this indiana pacers continue to be a playoff team that's one thing the indiana pacers are going to do they will be a playoff team they will be but this doesn't raise the ceiling much higher than that Adding Drew Holiday for that roster is not going to make them a championship contender, right? I don't know. But for the Pelican side, if you're going to trade Drew Holiday, which which I'm pretty sure you probably are looking to, he's like 30-something years old at this point, and you're going to the to place where you're trying to acquire pieces that really fit around Zion, I don't think this would be a bad package for Drew Holiday. Next. The Cavs finally start over. Kevin, wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. The Cavs finally start over. The Cavaliers acquire LaMarcus and Keldon Johnson, and the Spurs get Kevin Luff. These are two teams that should be trying to stay away from, from long-term contracts and things like that. What do the Spurs get out of a trade like this? They're giving up Keldon Johnson. I think that Spurs fans really like Keldon Johnson. I think his future's bright, too. I do not like this trade whatsoever. I think the Spurs are a team that should be like, okay, yeah, maybe we do trade LaMarcus. And if DeMar DeRozan resides or take that extension, we look for a, a sign and trade opportunity. I think the Spurs, the streak is over. The 20-year playoff streak is over. And let's really go in with DeJounte Murray, with Lonnie Walker, with Keldon Johnson, and, and Derek White, and whoever it may be. Let's just hit that reset button. And a trade like this doesn't do anything. Sure, it'll put you back in playoff contention, but what what's the, what's the value in that at this point? When you don't have a bona fide star in the making. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we're going to compete for a playoff spot, it makes sense for the for the Phoenix Suns to do that because they're trying to build something with Aiden and Devin Booker. Right now, you don't have that solidified, like, future star piece. And I do think DeJounte has a very bright, bright future. But I don't know if he's a future all-star. I don't like this trade. Does it make sense? Do Obviously, the Cavs need to get Love contract off the books. Uh, it's a bad deal for them. Even over, yeah, okay, the San Antonio Spurs were better than the Cavs this past season. That's not really saying that much. And their young, t uh, I, I don't really, tell me, I don't really like this one. The Bucks quit messing around. We got a three-team trade. These are harder to do. The Bucks get VO and Robert Covington. I don't know what they're giving up already. But but th that, that package in return? Count me in. The Pacers get EB and their own first-round pick back from Milwaukee. The Houston Rockets get that get Dante DiVincenzo, Ursa Ilyasova, a first round pick from the Bucks from 2021, and a 2023 first round pick. For Milwaukee, this is an easy trade to do. Right? I think it's an easy trade to do. Uh, uh, those two first round picks are kind of iffy, especially if you don't know for sure if Giannis is going to resign. Those two first round picks are iffy. But as far as like saying to Giannis, hey, we're here to build you a championship roster. Victor Oladipo helps that. And Robert Covington is a guy that just every team would love to have. He really is. Small four, power four, can, can run all of those. Defends very well. 
Uh, we saw that he can run some center, I guess. But you got Giannis, so you don't need a center because Giannis can run run at center. And you still have Brick Lopez. Who gets the best right now pieces in this trade is for sure the Milwaukee Bucks. But I think that they'd be kind of hesitant to trade away two first round picks unless they unless Giannis sees this trade and be like, okay, I'll sign that Supermax. Then you don't care about those first round picks because you got Giannis for the next five years, and that means you're probably gonna be a playoff team for five years straight. Andy, you traded Victor Oladipo, get it back EB, and your pick back from this year. Cool. That's number 24, so it's not that much. Uh, but a VO is expressing that he wants to get traded. Getting Eric Bledsoe in return uh, keeps you, again, to a playoff team. But again, it's the Indiana Pacers. I don't really know. Houston Rockets, this is like, hey, man, um, we're trying to get some future assets because we don't really have many. And trading Robert Covington and getting back two first-round picks, even though they might be late first-round picks, they're still picks. And getting back Dante DiVincenzo, who's a younger player, and Ursa Ilyasova. If your goal is to trade Robert Covington, I don't think this is a bad, I don't think this is a bad return for it. It may lower your ceiling a little bit for the now because, of course, Robert Covington was a big portion of what the Houston Rockets were trying to do this season. This is this is not a terrible trade if Giannis will sign the Supermax. It's not. If we don't know if Giannis is signing the Supermax, I'm not, if I'm Milwaukee, I'm sorry, I'm not giving them two first-round picks because if Giannis walks, we're in the lottery again. And those picks are way more valuable than the late 20s. The Indiana Pacers, again, like I mentioned in the last trade, I don't really know what to think about the Indiana Pacers. I don't hate this trade. I do not hate this trade. I think this trade would be very, very interesting. Very interesting. I don't think Rockets fans will love this trade. But it is what it is. And lastly, speaking of the, Ro the Rockets, the Rockets and the Knicks go nuclear. Okay. The Rockets acquire RJ, Frankie Smokes, Frankie Nilekina, the 8th pick, and the 27th pick for Russell Westbrook. Okay, um, that actually makes sense. Okay, I don't think this makes sense. <laughs> I, I can, I'm just going to say that right now. I don't think this makes sense. Again, like I said, Brody's name is going to be in a lot of trade trade packages this offseason. It's just the way it is. Honestly, the Knicks have not been good for seven years. So I'm sure there are some Knicks fans that would look at this and be like, sure, let's do it because Russell Westbrook is still good enough to make your team a playoff contender. But, Knicks fans, I will say, do not jump the gun on a trade like this. This is all the future assets except for Mitchell Robinson. All of them. I'm not trading RJ, my top three from last year, who may not look great last year, but he's still, what, what is he, 19, 20 now? I'm not giving up on RJ. I'm not giving up on the eighth overall pick and another first rounder for aging point guard. Again, Russell Westbrook is still very good. He's still very good. But what are you going to surround him with? Damian Dotson? Wayne Ellington coming back? Todd Gibson? You're not giving up all those future assets and panicking and getting the guy that, again, will get you to the point where, hey, he's, he, would be, look, he would be fun to watch in the Mecca for sure. But you don't give up these future assets for, how old is Russell Westbrook at this point? 32? 32? Still good. But I'm not trading my all of my future assets except for one for a 32-year-old point guard. And I don't have pieces around him. You do this trade if you still have one or two, three pieces around him, maybe. But you really wouldn't have nothing. Russell Westbrook is kicking it out to Kevin Knox. Fortnite guy. Like, come on, bro. I don't, I don't think this trade makes sense for New York. I think the Houston Rockets, it probably don't even make sense for them either. I mean, this is like if your direction is to blow it up, sure. But if you're if you're still trying to build a team around James Harden, who at this point is what thirty as well, I uh, I don't think this trade makes sense. I I don't think this trade makes sense. Barrett is still young enough. I think am I div am I undervaluing Russell Westbrook or is he overvaluing val valuing overvaluing Russell Westbrook? The value on Russell Westbrook might be right. It's the team that doesn't make sense, maybe. I don't know what it is. It's just a, something about this trade. Just, I do not, it does not make sense to me. Maybe it's all of it. Maybe he's overvaluing Russell Westbrook at, as an aging point guard. The Knicks don't make sense because they don't really have anything else other than everything you're traded away. I, I don't like this trade. Does this trade make sense? No. So out of all of these trades, I think that maybe two of them, or maybe three out of the five make sense on a surface level. Let me know what you think about all these trades. I don't know. These are always fun, though. Shout out to Grant Hughes again. 
um, Houston Rockets fans, uh, Houston Rockets fans and Knicks fans, y'all are the biggest ones I'm asking for. Trade number five and the Indiana P Pacer fans, I guess for trade number two and trade number four because y'all are in every trade because VO is just out there. Let me know. Peace.